Hi guys, I hope that you're having a fabulous day. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a couple reveals because I have added to my pre-love collection, so I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up, and without further ado, let's get started, shall we? Now, both of these items, both of these items are repurchases. Yeah, you heard that correctly, repurchases. Now I'm sure you're probably thinking, oh, you must have regretted selling them. That's why you're repurchasing them. No, you guys know that whenever I sell something, I make my peace with it, I don't have any regrets. Uh, but the reason why I am repurchasing them is because one of them has since been discontinued, so it left me no choice. And the other, I wanted to give it another go, especially because it is one of my favorite prints and um, I didn't really use it as much before. I was always a little bit scared to use it because I didn't want to get any color transfer and stuff like that. I'm sure you guys already know where I'm headed. But uh, both of them are from Louis Vuitton. One is a small leather good and one is a handbag. So I'm going to begin with the small leather good first. So here it is. It came in its dust bag and I will share the price. I will share where I got it, all that good stuff. So here it is in its dust bag. And I repurchased the Louis Vuitton key pouch in the Demi Zor. So as I said, this item has since been discontinued. So I have been looking for it like a mad woman. And on the pre-love market, dude, I'm seeing them for like 450 bucks, 475. If there's one thing that I like about the pre-love market, I wanna be able to get a, like a deal. I'm not really one to go for something that's over retail. I wanna get a good deal, you know? So um, yeah, I'm like, I'm not gonna pay 475 for it. No, I don't, I don't want to. Uh, so I had, you know, I had alerts all set up. I was trying to find this and finally this one popped up and uh, it's in pretty good condition. It does have some slight color transfer, not too, too bad. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see it or not, it's here on the corners. But uh, I remember when I had this, uh, I used it quite a bit, but I ended up parting ways with it because I started having a lot of issues with the, with the zipper. The zipper started to get this really funky patina, this really funky color started to turn green, and I, I couldn't get rid of it to save my life. Uh, so I ended up, uh, you know, just saying, peace. And, um, you know, I, uh, I've been wanting to go for another Demi Azor. And by the time that I wanted to add it back into my collection, you couldn't get it on the Louis Vuitton website. So like I said before, I had to go on the pre-love market. This one has a little bit more wear on the zipper here. That doesn't bother me. That's bound to happen anyways. And then on the interior, I try to clean it up as much as I possibly could. With this, I just end up using warm water and a microfiber cloth to get any kind of residue off as much as I can anyways. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, it's not saying that I'm recommending to do that, but if you feel comfortable doing it, that's what I have done. Um, and I've never had any issues with it. But... Yeah, so I, you know, I love these little key pouches. I think that the possibilities are endless in how you can incorporate these items. You know, you can use them for your keys. You can use them as a catch-all for different accessories, what have you, as a little grab and go. I think that these are great. And, um, you know, I just, uh, I really wanted to add it back into the collection. And Damien Zor, I think it's wonderful. Yes, it's prone to color transfer, especially with these guys. And if you were to use it as like a grab and go, and if you put it in your jeans, if you put it in your back pocket, it, there's a chance that you will get color transfer on it. But uh, at the same time, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm using it the way that I want to use it. And if I get a little bit of color transfer, then so be it. And the fact that this one already has some, I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely okay with that. So this one, I picked it up on the real real for $195. So I was like, hey, that's pretty good because I remember when I first got mine, I think I paid 195 or 175, something like that. So I was like, okay, it's kind of, it's kind of the same. It's, you know, it's kind of whatever. Uh, so that made me feel good, especially when I saw the, the prices for some of the other ones. Of course, some of the ones that are going for like 500 bucks, they're like in pristine, immaculate condition. But the way that I use these key pouches, I am brutal on them. Uh, so the fact, again, that it has a little bit of wear, I am absolutely okay with that. So this one says Louis Vuitton Paris made in Spain and it is from 2009 you know so it has a little bit of age it has a little bit of a story to it and come on 195 bucks I I am more than okay with that instead of you know like a bigger price tag or what or whatever so not too bad right a little bit of color transfer not too too bad so I am happy that this is back and uh, this isn't going anywhere. Okay, now for the bag. Do you guys have any idea what bag is in this dust bag? 
This was actually one of my first collection videos when I first started YouTube. Uh, so if you've been with me since then, I'm sure you already have an idea what bag this is. So this also came with its dust bag. And when I had this handbag in my collection, I, I mean, I loved it. I thought it was great. I would use it here and there, not too often because I was so terrified that it would get color transfer. So I, I felt like I, whenever I'd put it on, I would feel really uncomfortable. I'd put it on my shoulder and I'd kind of hold it at a distance. I looked like an idiot the way that I'd walk with it because I was like, not, I mean, not like this, you know, but I, I mean, not like linebacker or anything, but I just, I just felt so out of place with the bag because I just didn't know how to embrace it. Does that make sense? Not embrace it. That sounds stupid too. Uh, like I just felt like I wanted to, I didn't want anything to happen to it. I would put it in a bubble. And again, if you guys have been with me since the beginning, I used to put bags in bubbles. And what I mean by that is, is that I would be so afraid that anything would happen to, to these bags that I wouldn't fully enjoy them. I would hold them at a distance. I would be so extra super careful in how I use them and when I use them and stuff like that, that it just, I felt like it was almost tiresome to be so cautious about it. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to be cautious with your handbags, not at all. You know, it's not like these things are, you know, five cents, but at the same time, I want to be able to enjoy them. So I promised myself a couple years ago, I was like, never again, never again. I'm going to enjoy it to the fullest. If it gets color transfer, if it gets scratches, if it gets water stains, so be it. Who cares? I'm going to enjoy the bag and rock it to the fullest because that's what it's all about. Enjoying the bag, you know, at least for me, I don't want it to just sit there looking pretty for eons. I don't want that. Anyways, enough of that tangent, but here it is in its dust bag. Okay. I picked up, I repurchased the beautiful Galliera PM in the Demi Azor. I love the Galliera. I've always loved the Galliera, even after I sold it. Anytime that I would see it, my eyes would light up. Uh, now this bag was available in either the Demi Azor or the Monogram, and you can either go for it in the PM or the GM size, but I love the, the PM size. I think it's the perfect size. It's not too big, but it's still that, you know, that big bag kind of uh, vibe to it. So I, I just think it's great. I think it's absolutely great. But I knew that if I repurchased this bag, number one, I didn't want to pay an arm and a leg for it. I was looking for a deal. And number two, I also wanted it to have a little bit of wear just in case it didn't work out. And just in case I went back into my old mini mentality and I wanted to put it back into that bubble. I don't think I would put it in that bubble, but you never know. Sometimes you go back to your old pattern. So I was like, nope, I wanted to have a little bit of character and I also wanted to have a good price point. Point. So this guy popped up and the price that I paid for it definitely was reflected with the condition that it came in. So I'm not going to deny that. Uh, but I just wanted to give it another go. Uh, let me give you guys a really quick tour before I get into everything else. So on the front side, you do have this beautiful inventor plate. Uh, I know that sometimes with the inventor plate, people aren't too fond of it just because uh, they had a tendency to, to show those scratches uh, very, very easily and very quickly. Uh, this one does have some scratches. It's actually a lot better than I anticipated. So that made me happy. You have the beautiful leather piping there. There is a side view. There is the back view, the piping as well. You don't have any exterior pockets. Side view, the bottom, you have feet along the bottom. It is a shoulder hobo bag and it does have adjustments on the strap. And then it opens up like so. It has a magnetic closure. And on the inside, you have the microfiber lining. You have two slip pockets, and one of them has a little snap button closure there. And it also features a little D-ring right there. So this guy says, a Louis Vuitton Paris made in the USA. There we go. And I do believe, when I saw the, the date code, this was from 2008, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So like I said, this guy definitely has uh, quite a bit of wear to it. Uh, I did clean it up a little bit. I actually found a leather conditioner or a leather cleaner, I'm sorry, that I got um, from Fashion File when I went to one of their events. So I have never used conditioner or I've never used cleaner on any of my bags. You guys know that. But I decided to give it a go and um, it, it turned out a lot better than I thought. So this bag, I paid 450 bucks 
for it. Like I said, the condition is reflected in the price, uh, 450 bucks, and uh, I also picked it up on the Real Real. So I was stoked because I've seen these on the pre love market in actually worse condition than this one for like six, seven hundred bucks. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. You know, I want to get, I want to get a good deal. Like I said in the beginning, that's what it's all about for me when it comes to the pre-love market. I want to get a good deal. Uh, but I did clean it up and, um, there is a strap. The strap on the outside doesn't look too bad. The strap on the inside, you can see that it's pretty dark. And then the trim around the bag, you're going to notice it the most right there. Uh, this is actually in better condition as far as the trim goes than my never full Damia Zor because that thing has seen some things, you know, uh, <laughs> which uh, which I'm okay with. But I just wanted to try it out because I've never cleaned up a bag. I've never used any cleaner like that. So I was like, you know what? Let's just let's just test it out. Let's <laughs> let's let's have a little of an experiment. And it turned out better than I thought. It also had some color transfer on the back side. Now, usually, um, and this, you know, I'm not telling you what to do when it comes to color transfer to each their own, because I'm sure, you know, um, Louis Vuitton would be like, why would you do that? But with color transfer, it's sometimes tricky because if you are able to, let's say that you use a Damien Azor bag today and you got color transfer, it would be easier to remove color transfer the day that it happens than if it was to sit there for years, you know, years and years and years. Uh, but this guy had some color transfer on the backside uh, and I took Dawn dish soap, warm water and a microfiber cloth to it just to see if it would happen kind of like what I did with my Damien Azor when I got color transfer on that, um, I'm sorry, on that never full years and years ago. And I would say that I was able to get like 80%, actually more like 90% of the color transfer that had on the backside. Can you guys even see the color transfer? There's a little bit right here. There's also some fading on the squares there, but for the most part, it's, it's in way better condition. After I cleaned it up, I showed the hubs and he's like, where'd you get that one? I'm all, this is the same bag. Because like I said, the, the price and the condition that it was in, it was, it, yeah, <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't the best. I will fully admit it. Uh, but I was able to clean it up and it looks like I've had this bag since the beginning, you know, and I'm, I'm good with that. I'm totally good with that. Uh, you know, it's funny because I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Sometimes when I see some items on the pre-love market, if I buy something on the pre-love market that has so much wear and tear or so much wear on the leather, sometimes I'm like, what, 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 what are people doing to these bags? Like, are they just like running them through the mud or what? Granted, I understand that some people use bags just as their intended purpose to lug your crap around. I totally get that. But sometimes I'm just like, dude, <laughs> they, I mean, they fully, fully use the bag. And again, like I said in the beginning, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what it's all about when it comes to bags. But sometimes I wonder what in the hell did they do to this bag? Because sometimes they're like so beat up, you know, I'm like, even if I tried to make it look this bad, I, I couldn't. So I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes those, those thoughts like pop into my head. Do they pop into yours? If they do, let me know. Don't leave me hanging out here because I think some of you might think the same way I do. Uh, now, one thing with the Galliera, uh, with these rings, it has Louis Vuitton on the hardware. It has it pretty much everywhere. Uh, they always ended up rubbing and you would get these dark uh, markings on the leather here, but I was able to clean those up as well. I was so happy. The cleaner that I'm talking about, like I said, is from Fashion File and it was the... Uh, uh, they had it on their website, TLC, I think, but I got it in, at an event and it works like a, like a dream. I was like, holy cow. I was able to clean up like some of the oil marks. And then, um, after the cleaner, you can use the conditioner to, to kind of seal the back. So that way it doesn't look so dry. Um, so that made me, that made me really happy. This bag also had right here, it had a, uh, I really should have taken before and after pictures. Uh, and after I cleaned it up, I'm like, dude, I'm so stupid. I should, I should have done that. 
This is the picture that I sent my mom after I cleaned up the bag. And as you can see, these towels are dirty. Both sides, all right? Both sides, front and back, are filthy. We're talking oils, color transfer, the works. Now, as I said before, I wanted a bag with wear. Of course, I ended up getting something that had more wear than I anticipated. But I was also really excited to experiment a little with cleaners and conditioners. And I love the way that it turned out. But it had a gnarly pen mark right here, but I was able to remove Remove the pen mark with rubbing alcohol. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. If it makes you comfortable doing it, do it. But I was like, I'm going to try it because I've heard great things about rubbing alcohol when it comes to pen marks. And where is the pen mark? Not there. So that made me super happy. But uh, yeah, so this bag has seen some things as well and it has quite a bit of wear on it. But this strap is so comfortable. I love the size. Uh, and I feel like if I would have kept mine and if I would have used it the way that I think it should have been used, this is exactly what it would look like. And it was from the same year, I think, too. So, yeah, that makes me so happy. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. But Demi Azor, I just, I think it looks awesome. And to be completely honest with you, and it's not because of this bag, but I love the honey golden patina paired with Damia Azor. I just think that it makes the print sing so much louder and I love it with the gold hardware. I mean, just I think that all three elements work fabulously together, you know, but um, yeah, so she's a, she's a little warm, but she's got a whole lot of history left in her. So we will see, but I am so, so stoked. And for 450 bucks, come on. I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up. And the fact that I was able to put a little elbow grease in it and make it look a lot better, you know, I thought that made me, <laughs> that made me insanely happy. Now I did get them uh, authenticated. You guys know, no matter what, I always get my stuff authenticated regardless of where I got it from. Um, and they both came back authentic. So that made me really happy, but 450, 195, come on. Not bad for a pair of beautiful Damien Azor pieces, right? But anyways, that does it for my video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you'd like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys in my next one. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.